Have you ever spent your time and your financial institution's resources working on winning a commercial loan lead only to win the lead, have that lead underwritten, but then taken to the committee or taken to the board of directors and have that opportunity not be given the time or the interest that it's deserved and to ultimately have the loan denied. Only to be denied just because either the committee, your CEO, or the board of directors just didn't understand the business or more importantly, didn't understand the business model. Over the next 30 minutes, we're gonna discuss how you can one, source more loan opportunities, two, create a faster and more reliable underwriting process for small business loans, and three, get the approval you want in a safe and sound manner. Let's get started. Hello, my name is Anson Cooley, and I'm the principal of Synergy Credit Union Consulting. And over the last 17 years, I've worked as an examiner, an internal auditor, a loan reviewer. Currently, as the owner of, of Synergy Credit Union Consulting, we do a lot of strategic planning, uh, NBL review work, um, risk appetite development in the context of enterprise risk management. We do SBA loan audits and a variety of other things. If you like more information about my company, you can visit us at, where are we at? Go oh, this way, <laughs> uh, syncuc.com. Without further ado, let's get started with the presentation. So let me tell you a quick story. It's uh, 9 a.m., I'm at one of my clients. Uh, I'm sitting in on one of their loan committee meetings. On a docket today, first on the docket that particular day was a $2 million uh, CNI loan uh, to a spice company. All right, I had looked at the loan the last two nights, and I had already drawn my conclusions about the credit. I thought it was a decent deal. Okay, what was interesting about it is that as I just sat in the back of the room and observed the questions that the other committee members had, it was clear that from a skill set and an experience standpoint, they never really looked at a core CNI deal. They're more comfortable with commercial real estate because primarily that's what their uh, financial institution did from a lending standpoint. They, everybody knew dirt, they knew apartment buildings, they knew spec lending, they knew developments. But the only real question that anyone had about the loan was, Will his wife sign as a guarantor on that particular deal? All right. No one asked about the suppliers. No one asked about the cash flows. No one asked about the business's customer segments. Of course, the deal did not get approved. And again, it wasn't because of the merits of the deal or the risk of the deal. It was just because of the lack of comfort that the committees had in that particular industry and in general around CNI credits. So a couple of weeks passed by after the loan was denied and happened to come across a book called The Business Model Generation by Alexander Osterweil. Okay. This model, excuse me, in this book, Alex explains that you can explain any venture to any person by understanding the underlying business model. In the book, he gives you examples of how to use his business model canvas. And this canvas has been used by companies like MasterCard, 3M, and GE, okay? After I digested the book, a light went off. And I say, what if we were to take this business model canvas and use it to craft our next loan presentation and bring the loan that was denied back into the committee and see if we can get it approved. So what exactly is the business model canvas and how does it work? 
I'll go over it real quick. So an organization's business model can be described with nine basic building blocks, your customer segments, your value proposition, the channels you use to reach your customers, your customer relationships, your revenue streams, your cost structure, your key resources, your key activities, and your key partners, okay? And in doing so, um, oftentimes when you think about what credit analysts do, they get a financial statement and an in, you know, to get the income sheet, excuse me, to get the income statement and to get the balance sheet. And most of our analysis focuses on the revenue stream and the cost structure. But oftentimes we don't have a mechanism to ask deeper questions around what the business actually does and how the business actually operates. What this business model canvas does, it gives us a framework to ask deeper questions and prevents us from having what uh, one of my old mentors would call just elevator analysis. Revenues went up, revenues went down. So for example, looking at the, the, the chart here, if revenues went down, was it because we lost a key customer relationship? Did we stop uh, with a particular customer segment? Did we lose a key resource? Then when you look at the cost structure, say if expenses went up, you have the ability to ask, now you can say, well, did one of the cost of our key resources go up or did we lose a key partner? Those are the type of questions that get us to having deeper conversations around our CNI and small business credits. So let's get back to our story and show you how we were able to utilize this framework in order to get our loan approval. So one of the first things you want to define or understand when you're looking at a business is a value proposition. The value proposition is essentially why someone chooses one business over the other. So in the case of our spice company that we're talking about, what was their value proposition? And so what the loan officer explained to me is that they have direct sourcing for all of their spices and they're able to provide better spices and a wider variety of spices at a lower cost than their competitors. None of this information was in the original presentation. And so one of the things that we made sure that we capture in our updated uh, presentation was giving the board members and the committee members a clear sense of the value proposition. Let me go a, a little bit deeper and give you another example. Take Verizon versus perhaps Boost Mobile. They have two different value propositions. People go with Verizon Wireless because no matter where they are in the country, whether or not they're in the mountains of Montana or deep in the south and down in Miami, you're going to have a good signal, okay? Versus Boost Mobile, if you go outside your front door or maybe out of your zip code, you're not going to get a reception. But they have a different value proposition, which is if you're young, got bad credit, and if you're just getting started and you just need the ability to have a cell phone, we have a phone for you. Two different value propositions, two different needs. Let's move on to the next building blocks of our business model canvas.